Welcome back to Kosi Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is your latest Arsenal news and transfer news. We're going to be talking about Thomas Partey. It is now confirmed Thomas Partey will be out for just eight weeks. After that, Thomas Partey will be coming back as early as late December. We'll also be talking about centre forwards. Ivan Tony, Evan Ferguson, Arsenal are tracking strikers for the 20. 24 year yes of course it's not going to come in january probably that is, that is talk for the summer but right from the summer right from august arsenal been tracking strikers we're going to be discussing the uh, the options on the table nicola pepe could finally find a way out of arsenal arsenal are asking for around two to three million a nominal fee for him to leave the club um you know this summer probably it is still summer and a couple of windows are still open up uh, you know the um i think the Saudi arabian market is open as well as the Turkish market as well. So, Nicola Pepe is in the verge of leaving Arsenal. Agreements are being held here and there, but the player is still looking for the right option and the best option for him as well. Hit the like button, subscribe to the podcast as well. It is international break, so let's have the conversations around the club before we get back to the pressure of Champions League football and Premier League football as well. So, the question for me, from you, from me to you um, this morning, Ivan Tony or Evan Ferguson? Right? You cannot choose both of them. You just have to go with one. Ivan Tony, of course, a little bit younger than I expected, by the way. Um, he's got that experience. He's got that um, uh, physicality ar around him. And he's a player that won't cost hundreds of millions. So I think Brentford, the fact that we've done good business with them uh, for David Dreyer, they could actually say, well, how about, how about 50 million? How about maybe 60 million for um, Ivan Tony? Evan Ferguson on the other side is the future. Everyone is saying he's going to become the new Hurricane in the Premier League. And I might not disagree. He's very clinical, very physical. His hold-up play is massively, massively underrated. This boy, at only 18 years of age, is going to be selling for $100 million. So where should Arsenal look? Do we look at Evan Ferguson, the future? Or do we look at Ivan Tony, proven? There is, he's a goal machine, but not as fancy and as expensive a deal like it would be to bring in Evan Ferguson. Let me know in the comment box below. Right, let's start off with that Nicola Pepe story that is actually making rounds on social media. So the update on now on, 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 on Pepe is simple. Pepe wants to leave Arsenal this summer. There's no question about that, and there is no changes to that. So the fact that he has not left the club uh, before the end of the transfer window doesn't mean anything because the clubs interested in him are actually in Turkey. The Turkish market uh, is still open, and of course in Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabian market is still open as well. However, Arsenal made it very, very clear that they are reluctant to let uh, to let Nicola Pepe go on a free. They don't want to terminate his contract. They just don't want to uh, lose him on a free. Obviously, I mean, if, if I'm Nicola Pepe, I'm in a safe place. He is in a safe place with his contract because Arsenal will continue paying his wages until the end uh, if they refuse to terminate his contract. And if they do terminate his contract, again, he walks away, gets a bigger sign-on fee uh, earlier rather than later. So it's kind of uh, the same. It's more like um, a win-win, but that win-win is only for Nicola Pepe. Now, the problem for Pepe is one. This season, if he stays at Arsenal, he's not going to play football. He's not going to play um, regular football like Saka, Rhys Nelson. There are so many players ahead of him. You look at Trossard, you look at Emil smith who actually, by the way, is good. I mean, many people forget how good Emil smith is. He's actually good. So for me, Nicola Pepe, the best solution and the best outcome f uh, for this relationship should have been Pepe and his agent finding a club they agree personal terms and as part of those personal terms they agree a certain percentage goes to arsenal because the club has, has been very clear with nicola pepe we will let you go we will give you your freedom but we are not ready to terminate that contract we invested around 70 million uh, in you in 2016 2017 we cannot then just go okay he's gone for nothing he's gone for free unless your contract is down no one is going to take you by terminating your contract. So for me, Nicola Pepe, uh, personal terms agreed with Besiktas uh, a long time ago. The player is, you know, I don't think he's 100% convinced about the project at Besiktas. Otherwise, uh, this deal will be absolutely over. There are talks about Al-Shabaab. There are talks about Al-Ahli as well and Saudi Arabian clubs, um, you know, talking to him. But 
for me in the next one week or two weeks we might see nicola pepe decide his future and i won't be surprised if it is besiktas right i won't be surprised if he goes to turkey the only problem with besiktas they don't want to pay money they don't want to pay um the nominal fee arsenal asking for they came in with 2.5 million for um rob holding that was disrespectful arsenal turned it down and they came in for a free for nicola pepe again arsenal turned that down but let's wait and see where this one is gonna end he's done medicals according to some sources but i don't think those medicals could have been done if a deal had not been done uh, between Besiktas and Arsenal. So I still think personal terms are in place with Besiktas. If Besiktas can find an agreement between them and Arsenal, then the player will be joining them this summer. Now it is confirmed Thomas Partey is going to be out for just eight weeks. That is two months, right? That is two months. However much I'm saying it's just eight weeks, it is two months. But um, some people are saying it could be as early as six weeks. I don't think uh, Arsenal will not miss Thomas Partey during that period of time. But coming back in December is also an added advantage. So, for example, he's out for the whole of October. He's out for the, for the whole of uh, uh, November. And he's out for the, the, the whole of actually September as well. Because today is the sixth day of this month. So, he's out for September. He's out for October. And he will be returning early or late November. Why I think that will be um, an ideal timing for Thomas Partey to come back, you've got to check that fixture list. And of course, December, we know what happens, don't we? We absolutely know the nonsense of how fixtures uh, combined in, in, in December. You've got like Boxing Day, then you've got, uh, you know, the first day, which is um, always you know, in January, but feels like it's in December. Then you've got like, seven other fixtures in that calendar in december that is when we shall need our squad depth a lot i've already said that the earlier days of the um, of the season you can play with 11 players and that's why you see teams like crystal palace always do well within the first 19 games they have a fresh a fresh starting 11 they don't have that big squad but they've got players that can play 19 games well and then when it comes to when you need the squad depth on the other part of the side of the coin on the other side of the coin that is where things actually flip in, you know outside of their favor so i think thomas Partey coming back in november december is absolutely all right okay we can rotate him with declan rice uh when he comes back in december we can play them together the fixture list is going to be absolutely crazy and absolutely crucial as well so watch out for that one thomas Partey just eight weeks and in those eight weeks by the way we have an international break, actually two international breaks, one in September, which one we, uh, which we are already um, handling, and one in October. So we have one coming up in October, we have one in, in, in September, which we are already in. So I don't think it's a, it's a point to be worried about. I don't think it's a point to be, a point to be uh, worried about anymore. He will miss Manchester City, I think. He will miss the Liverpool game as well. Uh, but the rest of those co you know, congested fixtures... In December, he will be available for selection. And I'm really, really happy with that. Okay, so let's talk about the strikers Arsenal and now focusing on that part of the of, of the rebuild. We are focusing on strikers. That is the only part, that's the only area where Arsenal have not strengthened enough. And I'm not saying we're gonna sign many strikers. It could be one, it could be two. Uh, but let's uh, let's discuss the options before we get into what do we do with strikers we have already let's discuss the options the two options that i have seen um uh ivan tony and evan ferguson let's start off with tony tony i like tony is a very well-built um premier league striker and i'm going to uh, i'm going to call this ivan tony in 2024 will be playing for a, uh, for a side among the top six. He will be playing for a top six side. I don't know why Newcastle just don't get a player like Ivan Tony. Of course, they do have Calm Wilson, but I think for the long term, term for the long run, I think Ivan Tony can step up on a big stage like the UEFA Champions League, and I don't think Calm Wilson will do that. But of course, I can only be right or wrong because the, the UEFA Champions League campaign is kicking off this September. So... My point here, guys, is Ivan Tony looks set for the big stage already. 
if he wasn't suspended from football, would Brentford keep him? Would Brentford really keep him with Chelsea looking for a striker and disorganizing their system with Nicholas Jackson? Would they keep him with um, Tottenham Hotspur waiting patiently to replace Harry Kane? Would they keep him? I, I, I doubt. I really, really doubt. I think he's the perfect replacement of a player like Harry Kane. He's the perfect replacement of a player like Adebayo, who actually Arsenal have never replaced. He's the perfect replacement of a player like Pierre Imerick Aubameyang who we have never replaced as well. So I'm going to say, Ivan Tony, for me, is ahead of Evan Ferguson with, uh, uh, for about two years. With about two years' experience, this guy scored around 30 goals in the championship to bring Brentford um, into the Premier League. 30 goals. And, and of course, don't mind the 30 goals. He was playing with a striking, uh, with, um, uh, with, with a partner, and that partner is Brian Buemo. Right, he didn't share the goals. He scored thirty, and when he came into the Premier League, he actually you know proved to us that he can raise the standards and keep Brentford up in the Premier League. He scored twenty last campaign. Like when you think about twenty goals last campaign, you think about how much we praised Odegaard for fifteen. You think about how much we praised uh, Xhaka for seven, and you think about how much we praised. Um, uh, Emil Smith wrote the season before that for 10. 20 Premier League goals is so, so different. If Ivan Tony adds his 20 Premier League goals to, to Arsenal's campaign, we win the league, right? But I think he's a striker that Arsenal need. He's a striker that can win you those difficult games. He's a striker that is so good at positioning. He's a striker that can, you know, spin in behind. He's a striker that can use his head very well, left foot, right foot, penalties his class. I think Arsenal will be getting the overall package. And guess what? For less. I think that is what Arsenal should look at here. You're getting Ivan Tony. Maybe by that time he will be 25, 26, right? You're getting an experienced Premier League striker. And you know the we know the longevity of, of strikers these days. Karim Benzema, 38. Robert Lewandowski will go up to 40. Ronaldo up to 40, Messi up to 40, Zlatan up to 40. So the longevity with strikers means that you can actually invest 100 million in your new striker at 30, right? And he will still work out very well. That's what Bayern have done. They have signed a 30-year-old Hurricane for 100 million. And he's going to be a magic star for Bayern for three years. Until 33, you don't expect Hurricane to actually decline. So for me, it's Ivan Tony. Uh, between the two, it's Ivan Tony. But just let's talk about Ivan Ferguson as well. Evan Ferguson, actually. With Evan, you've got um, a young striker, one for the present and one for the future. At 18 years, you combine him with Saka and Gabriel Martinelli, and you have an uh, unstoppable under 18 side. However, the problem is that Arsenal are not looking to become an unstoppable under-18 side. We're looking to, to win the Premier League and the Champions League. So I would say, Ivan Tony for, for uh, sorry, Everson, Evan Ferguson for 100 million. That is not a, a, an Arsenal deal. That just doesn't sound like an Arsenal deal. That sounds like a deal for a club that wears blue in London. Oh, I'm wearing blue. Chelsea, I mean. I think it's a good deal, but for a club like Chelsea, a club that will are okay to take their losses, a club that will want a player who's, you know, who, who has shown for two seasons, they're not really sure if he's guaranteed to do it again, and they'll splash the cash. But for me, for Arsenal, for safety, I would prefer Ivan Tony. But do not underestimate, and do not say, I have underestimated Evan Ferguson. Hattrick monster, monster striker. He's got every attribute of a 30-year-old, and yet he's just 18. And, of course, it's the character for me that will bring him out Arsenal. I look, I look at Mikel Arteta, and the way he looks at Odegaard, and the way he looks up to Zichenko, and the way he looks up to uh, players like Saka, players that are leaders at that young age, and I'm like, 
There's no way Evan Ferguson is not going to be on the transfer wish list um, at Arsenal. I think in number one will be you know Evan Ferguson. Number two, Evan Ferguson. Number three, Evan Ferguson. Number four, Evan Ferguson. And then number five may be Ivan Tony. I know Mikel Arteta. I know what he wants. He's going to go for Ferguson. He will try to sign Ferguson. And of course, I will do a video for you before the international break, uh, break, uh, the international break ends to talk about Evan Ferguson, what he brings at Arsenal, and why he's going to become a monster striker, and why also you should not sleep on Ivan Tony, even if he's not playing football for eight months. I'll see you right in the next one.